Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 28 for November 10th, 2020. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Let's get to the lineup card. Angelo Trinidad from Aliso Viejo, California. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How's everyone doing? Doing well here. Kevin Lyon, Anaheim, California, playing shortstop. Shortstop. At a slim, oh, at a sl you're playing shortstop today. All right. Thank you. <laughs> oh, because you're saying I'm sport. I see what you're saying. <laughs> and I am Michael Mondragon from Sierra Madre, California. So let's uh, start out today. We're going to kind of flip it in reverse. Uh, if you don't stay till the very end, we actually do the plugs at the very end to uh, promote something. So I'm going to throw out some plugs. So Angelo, uh, do you have anything that you want to plug um, yeah. at the top of the show? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A couple things. So uh, first off, uh, congratulations to uh, our friends at uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Uh, who uh, filmed their 500th episode this past weekend. Wow. Uh, so uh, my, Michael and I were um, there at the very beginning of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood in 2010, uh, and uh, they just filmed episode 500, and I was a part of the program until probably episode 350 or 360 and so. Wow. So um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, a lot of my favorite shows never made it to 500 episodes, uh, so huge accomplishment to uh, David and, and Nick and the team over at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. So check them out at CWF Hollywood uh, on all the social media outlets, um, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood on Facebook. Um, then you can see their sister program, Primetime Live, on Fight TV each and every week. Uh, and I also want to plug uh, Ryan, who was on the um, Hoppy Hour a couple weeks ago, talking about the Dodgers World Series win. Uh, starting a video game stream uh, primarily on Warzone. You'll find me on there too, uh, just about every night. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Big Teach, B I G T E A C H 45. Uh, Facebook.com slash, slash Big Teach 45 and Instagram.com slash Big Teach 45. And you'll be able to see Ryan and what he's up to. He's going to be doing an unboxing uh, of the PS5 when he gets that, uh, I believe, this week or next week. Um, and you can see what we're up to in our uh, Call of Duty Warzone shenanigans. That is awesome. Yeah, Ryan was uh, super cool. And uh, I still have not, uh, I keep on seeing him going live and I'm not able to uh, to join. It's It's been a very hectic week so far. So, uh, but I'll definitely uh, make a note uh, to get there. So thank you for that, Angelo. Kevin, yep. uh, do you have any plugs that you want to put I out there? Any plugs? Work, I mean, my beer, I'm going to have, you know, hope the beer's, going to be still at the beginning of the show right not the end oh yeah 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 okay yeah, we're not going to put that at the end of the show no. <laughs> yeah. um usually i say support your local brewery um my beer this week when we get to it i got it red beer they had a make usually you can buy your own four pack but they actually made four packs themselves and some of their pie cans and they were having a sale for like 14 dollars for a four pack which is pretty good so i got one of those with a, with a beer i've never tried so that's coming up soon Otherwise, I always say, you like your major league team, support their minor league team. It's simple. 
Just do a Google search on Milwaukee Brewers minor league teams, and boom, you'll see what they are. Buy some merch. Um, some of those teams are doing like sales right now. I saw local team Lancaster Deadhawks. I got an email from them today. They have like cleared stuff for sale. Oh, really? I was, yeah. I want to say it was a, I, there was a hat deal too. I think it was almost like I don't get one free or there was a big discount like that. Oh, wow. I've got to check that out. Yeah, look that up. And uh, otherwise, you want to see whatever I'm getting into, you can find me at Lock and Lol, L O K N L O L L, on Instagram and Twitter. If you wrestling fans, Watch New Japan for wrestling. Yep. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's a couple like big things. There's like three big things coming up. The the Tag League, the uh, Super J Cup, and the uh, the uh, that's the other. Juniors. That's the Super yeah. Juniors. Yeah. The Super yeah. J Cup is happening here in America with uh, mostly American wrestlers in there. So that'll be fun to watch. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of... Um, uh, supporting your local teams. I'm actually wearing the uh, Canapolis Cannonballers. Nice. Uh, actually, I will uh, let me let me solo uh, myself real quick. Yeah, uh, it's actually super cool That's because awesome. cool. yeah, and it's another team that did not uh, participate this year. They're actually in the South Atlantic League, and they're the Class A affiliate for the Chicago White Sox. And okay. um, what was cool is I think that they were actually going to have um the promotion where they like had someone in a cannonball they were going to shoot, shoot them out, them out. Oh, yeah awesome. so they actually made the whole hat and the whole gimmick out of it they used to be the canapolis intimidators i think that they were I think, um yeah, I think that's what yeah it and, and it was you know kind of a it was just a k with you know just kind of yeah. it looked intimidating it was not much but the, you know the branding now is so awesome so like I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna lose my fortune on on uh, minor league hats the way that this is going so um the other thing i want to throw out there really quickly on thursday night at 4 p.m uh pacific is uh carvers and creators uh actually if you go on youtube carvers creators uh look that up uh we were just on uh, it's a show that i host with two of my friends uh who are uh pumpkin carvers from the food network and uh we just got uh profiled on uh good mythical morning so if you're familiar with that show uh we were just on it uh for halloween and uh, so check us out and we do a whole bunch of art stuff and we actually carve and it's super cool and we have a lot of great artists on there so definitely check that out. Uh, let's so let's get into it. What are we drinking tonight? So uh, I'm going to start with you, uh, Angelo. Okay, awesome. So tonight I am drinking uh, from St. Archer Brewing Co. Uh, the Tropical uh, IPA. And uh, when I informed the group text that this is what I was drinking, they were admiring uh, how adventurous I'm getting with beer, and I'm about I'm about to tell you why. So this beer is seven percent ABV uh, with a seventy. IBU. So definitely going outside of my comfort zone. It's described uh, as um, uh, containing mosaic, citra, and Simcoe hops, which happen to be one of Michael's current favorites. Is that oh, yeah. right? Oh, always. <laughs> with a uh, with a touch of mango and uh, passion fruit. And what I can tell you, it's, uh, um, it's definitely outside of my realm, uh, but uh, has a very nice smell to it, a very floral smell. Uh, and, um, uh, and, uh, but I, the, the, the mango and the passion fruit is definitely prevalent, but not too strong. So uh, not a bad uh, selection for today's show. Yeah. And, and uh, seven ABV and 70 IBU is literate. That's my wheelhouse. That is my three, one pitch. I'm cranking out of the yard right there. Uh, that awesome. is, that's awesome. So yeah, I can imagine, uh, God, I'm, I'm just, I'm salivating just even looking at it. <laughs> <Is> <laughs> so. That's a, If you're going to go that high in the IBU tropical is a good way to go for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it, if, it if not, it'll be probably be too hoppy for you. The tropical yeah. will actually kind of like, you know, at least uh get you out of the that total hop haze. And and yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, I, I can imagine how good that is. All right, so a great choice, Angelo. Uh Kevin. Yeah. So when I mentioned um red beards earlier, my the last time I was there, they just put together like they had too many cans in stock. So like, well, we're gonna just Make our own four packs of stuff that we have extras of. And, you know, they pick. And you buy it for 14. But what they did was they did styles. So I bought one of like four different IPAs. And this is a brewery I've never heard of. It's in Oceanside, New York, which I was just looking up my oh, wow. world. world is Oceanside, New York. No idea. So I'm, I'm assuming it's a suburb of the suburbs of New York, but maybe I'm a little wrong on that. Let's see. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's more the east. It's eastern uh, 
east of Brooklyn, but obviously it's by the water there if it's ocean side. So yeah, this is called Wonderstruck. I can't do Brian Johnson. I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> Wonderstruck. But I like oh, that's a great photo too because I was trying to send the image of the logo there. This yeah. is a really cool artwork they did here, and this is a. Um, I'm guessing it's a pretty high uh, IBU. It's double dry hopped with, let me see all these hops here. Mosaic, Amarillo, Waiiti, Simcoe. And it has, I haven't tried it yet, but it says it has honeydew, peach, apricot, grapefruit. So some interesting flavors here. And it's 7.8. Oh, oh, it looks yeah. really easy too. So yeah. I think, it's, I think it says 7.8 uh, yeah, ABV. 7.8 New England IPA. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I'm going to be feeling good after I have this. Two great choices. I, oh, man. I mean, all the hazies and the New Englands are, are like are so good yeah. right now. It's a brewery I've never heard of, and they've been around for over a decade, which I didn't know that many in New York were around that long. Like, one of the last times I went out there, I was surprised at the lack of breweries that were there at that point. You said it, you said it was Oceanside, New York? Yes. Did you know that there's a Long Beach, New York? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I have a, a that friend yet. that that we did the Carvers and Creator show. He's out of Long Beach, New York. So I'm just like, you know, both coasts, I guess, have that, oh, that same type there's, of... like, there's some real big wrestling lore there because that's where, uh, I guess, I want to say the opener, Paul Bosch, was from there. Really? And he brought Stu Hart to be a lifeguard there, and Stu Hart met his wife there. <laughs> in Long, Beach, New York. So Long Beach, New York is the reason why you have the Hart family. Wow, so your how crazy. Fun fact of the day. That's super cool. All right. So my beer is a super interesting one. So it is from oh, uh, Dr. Hops, and it is actually a kombucha beer. Now, my first uh, reaction with this is like, oh, it's it's going to be something different. This, um, this is a pomegranate chai called the Lop. So it's the one on the far left over there. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, brewed with Belgian ale yeast. Uh, oh, it's a fresh wow. aromatic concoction, like a healthy mimosa. So, um, it's something, it, it definitely out of my, uh, what, what I would normally choose. And, uh, actually my girlfriend actually saw it and actually ordered it, I think from, uh, from Bevmo and when, uh, it's, we, we tasted it and I'm like, oh my gosh. And it, it's listed, it says it has like, it's a tantalizing citrus. Um, and it has like tartness, a cinnamon, um, and like a, like a fresh, it's described as a fresh orchard finish, which, which mm. I, I, I don't, that's kind of, oh, but it, I mean, it, it is, it's it, the most accurate description is it's like a healthy mimosa and it's, um, it's like drinking something from that Beechwood blendery, Kevin, that, that okay. almost like those sour beers. Cause I was going to ask, has anybody had, cause there is a hard kombucha and there I was is wondering a hard kombucha, what's yeah. the difference if it's different than this. I don't think you've ever had that. I never have. Yeah. And uh, so this, this beer is from, um, it's from San Jose. So it, it's, okay. uh, yeah, it's um, Dr. Hops. I mean, like there's, there's, um, there's also one called Dr. Jekyll's, which is actually right over here yeah. by me that you would think it would be more like this, but yeah. uh, this is actually really good. And I highly recommend yeah. it if you, if you see it anywhere um, and it's 8% out ABV. Oh, so it's oh, like, wow. yeah, it's super high. Um, it's higher than you would, you would expect, but yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely it's tasty. Than that. Yeah. I definitely I mean, was there anticipating you on that. Did you have definitely was anticipating you saying like four point five or five on the yeah. ABV yeah. or something like that? Yeah, it's weird. It's it's like uh, the sakis and the the uh, that now these kombuchas and stuff like that. The alcohol level is like probably twice what you would expect, and um, uh, they're super yeah. super fit and and they're, they're deceiving. Well, whereas you think that they're because it's so tasty. Yeah. You probably would drink a little bit more than you would you would usually. Like your four and, locos or one of those kind of days where it's like eight <laughs> percent. Yeah, you're just like, yeah. My uh, my, my girlfriend's notorious for this. She's like, oh man, I'm a little I'm a little dizzy from this. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, but so it's 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 definitely a little uh, off putting, but uh, definitely well, worth checking out. Thank you for for getting that because it's last week you had the michelada and now you're having this. You know, you're. You're introducing us to some cool stuff here that we want. Yeah, I'm trying to get a little bit more adventurous. I mean, I still have my West Coast IPAs that I that I love. Um, 
but I definitely wanted to uh, go outside of my comfort zone, especially for this show. So I wanted to, uh, uh, first of all, say hello to a whole bunch of people out there. Bubble Pug. Uh, yes, it is party time. Oh, yeah. All Angels podcast uh, checking in. Uh, also reminding its 25th anniversary of the oh, Montreal, yeah. Montreal Screwjob, which I do remember watching on pay-per-view when it happened. Me too. So, um, Me too. Uh, hold on. No, it's 23 years. It was, it was 97. 97 yep oh there you go so um okay that was 97 <laughs> yeah so very so very close that's okay my my, my math isn't strong i use math every day and i my my math isn't strong um you ever get phone calls at your house because i think i i got a phone call that night from someone who watched it oh wow <laughs> a phone call <laughs> yeah, yeah on a landline you know yeah Chad M checking in. We're, we're drinking out of your uh, your nice gifts. Yeah, uh, David tacos. checking in. Tacos. I wish I was having tacos tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Fred Colbert, hey. thank you. Cheers. Hey. And I was uh, here. sorry. Wrestling fan Colin Duncan. Uh, right. We're doing Colin. great. Thank you for joining. And uh, Cowboy Jack. Look yes. at this. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, shake the room. <laughs> World Series team of my heart. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> waxing wow. poetic he's he's our, he's our yeah. he's our online shakespeare uh thank yeah. you for joining it's it's uh and can also I say, uh, can i say it's that? a poet laureate of the beer baseball poet laureate yes uh jack we, we need to get you some frisbee so you can throw out your poetry yeah. out there yes <laughs> i'll i'll stick to baseball yeah right. 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 okay. but thank, thank, you, thank, thank you thank you for that i believe it i think it was early november which i thought was weird for survivor series it used to be on thanksgiving Oh, that's right. That's right. It used, it used to be a to be Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving tradition. Thanksgiving. You, you know what killed that was was the NWA. They they went head to head with it. They did the like the bunkhouse stampede uh, uh, on close know, circuit. Well, that's why Survivor Series started because they were competing with the NWA. Right. Starcade. Exactly. Was first, and then they were trying to get in on that, and you know the cable companies got mad because you know they're not making as much money. So that yeah, that they said it was us or them. Right, so yeah. they so that they chose uh, WWF. Yeah, but it's just like no more of that nonsense. We're here yep. to make money. <laughs> All right, so this is this day in baseball history for November tenth. Yes, baseball on November tenth. So let's go for it. November tenth, nineteen fifty. Seventeen months after nearly being mortally mm. wounded by an obsessed fan's rifle shot to the chest, what? Eddie oh, Eddie Waitkus is named Comeback Player of the Year by the Associated Press. What? The Phillies infielder hit 284 this season and continued to be one of the best fielding first basemen in the league. Now, does this sound familiar? No. <laughs> like, oh, the natural. That's right, yeah. All so right. you would think that this was, this was the story of that, right? Um, it, it, from, this was the 1984 uh, film called The Natural, right? So um, the, that story is on the way to a tryout with the Chicago Cubs, a young baseball phenom, Roy Hobbs, uh, is shot by an unstable Harriet Bird. Now, uh, while it, it borrows from the story I just told you about, it actually is closer related to this story, um, which was uh, a, in 1949, a woman who was stalking one of the baseball players in Chicago uh, actually shot a player with a gun. So uh, it inspired uh, actually that this story um, was in 1932. So there's like a whole bunch of stories. So we yeah, should actually, <laughs> yeah, we should actually go through and actually like yeah. document all these, <laughs> these women who are shooting ball players. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what? Is that going to be our beer baseball blog, like after dark or something? I mean, we can talk about Marco Adams in the eighties, you know, we got to talk about some, you know, Crazy yeah. women in baseball, you know. Yeah, so this is Bill Jurgis um, wow. and playing for the Chicago Cubs. So there's so many like little things, um, wow. you know. And there's a little bit of shoeless Joe Jackson in the natural, like you know his, mm -hmm. you know he was uh, the natural base. You know he was like yeah. the, you know he was so good. So I thought it was really interesting that <clears throat> this happened on this day in, uh, in what was it, 1950, I believe. Yeah. So November 10th, 1961, in addition to purchasing 100,000 tickets to the new National League's team games, the Rheingold Brewery agrees to pay $6 million for the radio and television rights to 126 games per year for five years. Oh so 
yeah so that i mean obviously a big deal and uh for for to get i mean now like merchandising or not merchandising but 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 sponsorship like this is is kind of regular but i'm I'm sure at the time uh this was a, a super big deal in and in, in new york for a new team and um it's the largest deal of its kind approximately double the cost of the franchise and all its first season players so yeah. that is yeah. that's pretty amazing I'd say Casey was probably the, Casey Stengel was probably the most expensive person in that in that you know on that team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I can't even remember that photo, that photo is fantastic. Yeah, and actually it's it's part of a bigger ad uh, which uh, I should share. Uh, it's it's so good and and there's uh, actually uh, this this right here was at the bottom of it, so I had to I put that in there. But as as such a classic classic picture and there, there's some actually really good uh copy that goes along with this too that we should definitely check out so november 10th 1965 giants outfielder willie mays is named national league's most valuable player receiving 224 of the writers votes compared to 177 for dodger southpaw sandy koufax who won 26 games with an era of 2.04 i think we talked about him last week um, yeah, I you know because yeah. he won the Cy Young. Cy Young. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the 34 year old San Francisco slugger batted 312 and led uh, the National League with 52 home runs and collected 112 RBIs for his second place club. Second place. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that's that's incredible. What what a season for him. And he, they probably finished behind the Dodgers. I don't remember for sure if that's right or not, but uh, 65. I think that they did. I think they might have. Yeah, probably. Uh, November 10th, 1987, in the closest voting in the history of the National League Cy Young Award, Phillies closer Steve Bedrosian narrowly edges Cubs right-hander Rick Sutcliffe by two points, 57 to 55, to cop the prestigious pitching prize. Now, uh, Bedrock is the third reliever in the National League, joining Mike Marshall of the Dodgers in 1974 and Bruce Suter. For the yeah. Cubs in 79 to accomplish wow. the feat. So I, I wanted to look at this, uh, like who is in this. Uh, Angelo, can um, do you know who third place is? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh. We, we should do a thing on Rick Russell. Uh, I think he – the reason why it says T.O.T. is because he actually played with two teams. I think he oh, played okay. – I was like, what's T.O.T.? Yeah, I thought it was like Toronto too. And I'm like, I no, like, he, he never know. played for Toronto. He played for the Cubs and I think Giants. And yeah. he – You know what I was going to say first about those, that picture? I thought you were going to tell me they're voting on the best beard for the, for the Cy Young Award. There. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of facial yeah. hair and a lot of beards going it's definitely on. Definitely 80s here. That's definitely like 87 right there. Yeah, wow. for sure, for sure. Uh, the, the the best part about that card, though, would be and what would be hilarious is if Rick Sutcliffe was actually the guy in the background, not the guy in the forefront. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. would that'd be, be like very... that'd be like that'd be like such a major rib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least at least tops. I could say like Don Russ or Fleer. That that could have been the case. Yeah, because uh, they didn't have really good photography. But at least with tops, <laughs> you know, they have good photography. Well, so, Rick yeah. Russell is actually an important part of the. Uh, your team a couple years later with, you know, with the giants, you did really well with the giants there. Yeah. He had a very underrated career and yeah. uh, like had 200 wins. Uh, and he, he looked like a guy, like, like we all collectively look better in better shape than Rick oh. Russell. Hey, he, he had a great career. Man, look at that third place. And he was 13 and nine. <laughs> God, but look at that ERA at three. And God, look at Nolan Ryan who came in fifth place and he was eight and 16 that year. And meanwhile, look at Mike Scott on the same team below him, 16 and 13. It's like, yeah. what? What's yeah. going on there? Yeah, and even totally. With Ryan's ERA, I mean, it's crazy. We look at Nolan Ryan's records. They're like, he was barely above 500 his whole career almost. It's because of stuff like this. I wonder yeah, he's, what happened to the 7 team because they were in the championship series the year before, you know? Yep. Yep. So, uh, mm -hmm. so cool to look back on all these and, and see like, uh, uh, you know, Steve Bedrosian was five and three, but you know, he had what 40 saves. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's pretty incredible. And, uh, so I, I, again, I just loved, uh, looking at the stats on, well, on this stuff. That ERA is not like mind blowing, like a 2.83 ERA. That's not mind blowing as a, as a closer, but it was yeah. good enough, obviously. Yeah. Yep. 
November 10th, 2003, Dontrell Willis, 14 and 6 with a 3.30 ERA, is the only player in either league to be listed on every ballot as he wins the National League Rookie of the Year. The 21 year old Marlins starter is named uh, first on 17 of 32 ballots by the writers with Brewer outfielder Scott Pesednik and Diamondback right hander Brandon Webb receiving other first place votes. Oh my now, I, this uh, forced me to kind of look back at Dontrell Willis's career. Uh, by the way, Dontrell Willis, as of today, is only 38, which is yeah. nuts. Yeah. I know, exactly. So he was 21. I, it, it seems like he would be so much older, yeah. um, but 21 here. So uh, he played with the uh, Marlins from uh, 2003 to 2007. He actually won the World Series that first year. Uh, went to the Tigers was actually a part of the um, uh, the trade that sent uh, Miggy, uh, Miguel yep. Cabrera, uh, uh, to the uh, Tigers. So he was with the Tigers from 2008 to 2010, uh, with the Diamondbacks in 2010 as well, and then finished with the Cincinnati Reds. Now, you would think, like, you know, four-year career, you know, 2003 to 2011, um, not very long, but he actually played a lot more baseball than you would expect. So... He actually played with the Orioles. He actually was with the with the Angels for a minute. Oh, that's, uh, that's he's, on, he's on the he's on the bees right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He threw he threw seven pitches in spring training for the Cubs. Um, uh, uh, what what is the team? The the I can't think all that is. It kind of looks like twins colored by. I'm like, I, is that an angel thing too? Though. No, I want to say it's not the mud hens, but uh, oh god, oh, it's okay. right on top of my top of my. Right. Uh, I tip my tongue, uh, but yeah. So he played on a, a, a lot of teams, trying to get back to that same form of of those years. And uh, so you know, if you look at his, if you look at his his very exaggerated uh, throwing motion, I mean, it was it was a lot. And as he got older, he got heavier, and yeah. so he had a lot of arm troubles. And, and you know, keeping that that same form, it, it was definitely hard. I, I think of like Tim Lincecum as mm -hmm. one of those guys who had such a, like a funky, uh, like wind up and a, and a, and a throwing motion, although very effective, but yeah. long-term it wasn't, you know, you're not going to have a very long career with, with those. It's more the simplicity of the, the throwing motion. So as you go back here, he actually even played with the long Island ducks and oh the Bridgeport God. Bluefish. Wow. Uh, I actually saw the Bridgeport That's Bluefish, uh, not during this year, but I think right. it was a couple of years before that. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. The Bridgeport Bluefish uh, were an independent team uh, in Connecticut that uh, they actually they let they would just let people manage their team like they let Jenny Finch, who was a a, a softball like player like she managed the team. Also Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, uh, as uh, and 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 Sean Waltman. Yeah, I, I think Sean Waltman was, was a part of that. But they let the NWO uh, manage a game. So that's, that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. So this all ends, uh, this all comes around. So on, uh, January 21st, 2015, Dontrell signed a minor league contract with the Milwaukee Brewers. However, on March 13th, 2015, he announced his retirement. Oh. Um, his nickname is the D train. Why is that significant? Because the rookie of the year, Devin oh. Williams, uh, he was named rookie of the year yesterday yep. Yep. and his Twitter is D train 23. Nice. Wow. There you go. All right. comes around. <clears throat> wow. All comes around. Touche. Yeah. Mike. Touché, Thank Michael. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That's why I do these shows okay. to get this all out of my brain. And, and, there, were two, <laughs> and there, were, there were two brewers. So we got a double drink to that. Yeah. Yep. Salute. And, um, Dontrell Willis, now a Fox, uh, baseball, uh, commentator yeah, and analyst. So. Salud. I'll hope you're going to tell me for the Brewers. That would be even better. That would have been uh, fantastic. <laughs> so on November Bobby 10th, Cox. 2004, right. I cannot get, I can't pass up an opportunity to talk about Bobby Cox. Uh, uh, the baseball writers uh, select Bobby Cox as uh, National League Manager of the Year. Although the team loses Greg Maddox, Gary Sheffield, Javi Lopez, and Vinny Castilla to free, free agency. The Braves, 96 and 58, capture their 13th straight and unexpected division flag. So I, I totally remember this year as them overachieving 
this is the year that the uh, Cardinals and uh, Red Sox went to the uh, World Series. And I cannot pass up an opportunity. Uh, this was actually in episode two. Uh, this was 100% real. Uh, this was a uh, when Bobby Cox was was retiring when he went through Washington. They actually honored him with this cake, which has a uh, pretty obvious uh, typo in it. Uh, so I uh, I I will never pass up the opportunity to show this picture. What are you talking about? That's not pronounced, you know. <laughs> it's to honor the man. It's to yeah. honor the man. Yeah. November tenth, twenty ten. At the age of 75, legendary Mariners broadcaster Dave Niehaus, best known for his trademark calls of my, oh my, and it will fly away, dies at his home after suffering a heart attack. Now, uh, I, I, I didn't want to bring it down on a bad note, uh, but I wanted to uh, start celebrating some of the great voices of baseball that you may yeah. not know. And uh, this is really significant uh, when I went to Safeco Field, I'm not. I'm. Is it T-Mobile Field now? I think. T-Mobile. Um, T-Mobile Park. Yeah. yeah. I missed so, it. So, um, yeah, I uh, saw this when I went over there, and, I, and it was like so it's it's like humongous. It's this big area um, out in center field, and uh, they really tr gave him a nice tribute. And uh, he's a 2008 Ford C. Frick Award uh, recipient. Uh, and at the time in 2008 was the only Seattle representative in the baseball hall of fame. Now there's Ken Griffey jr. And uh, Edgar Martinez. Um, but he, this is amazing to me. He called all but 101 of the 500, 385 games in 34 seasons for the Mariners. Wow. Um, so he included the very first pitch in, in franchise history th thrown by Diego Segui in 77. So a big part of Mariners history um, is right here. And I actually have, I, I didn't bring it over here with me. I actually have a, a CD that has like, uh, it's like all of his calls and oh, wow. uh, like they, they went through it and uh, there's for a couple of the people, but yeah, we should definitely celebrate some of the great voices of the game uh, what, because I think that's missed in today's game. Was he still announcing at the time of his death? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I, figured I think he one. was, and uh, he might have retired at the time, uh, but uh, oh. yeah, I think it was what even that year. That's why I want to ask. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Dave Nihas, uh, yeah. Salud. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, sure. and, uh, definitely check this out. I, I was really, I, th this was one of the things that I didn't even know about when I uh, went there and, uh, check this out. I saw this really great thing. I'm like, Oh wow. I, I, this seems like something I should know about. So, uh, very well done. Michael, you didn't tell me about this when I went there. Oh, um, did you not see it? No, I didn't know about this. But I, yeah. went to, I went to a pilot's game last year. Not oh, that's game. right. That's right. So, yeah, you have to walk all the way around. It's right. Yeah, I didn't right. do that. I missed the it's, chandelier, too. I missed, like, two of the coolest things in that whole park because I had no idea about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many cool things. And, and uh, I went on the tour of that, that stadium, and it was, oh, right it was totally worth it. You know, you find out these little things about all this stuff. Yeah. And actually what was cool is, like, the reason why I know about this is because our seats – um uh on one night we're over uh, right to the left of this. There's a kind of like mm -hmm. kind of stadium seats, but it's, it's really cool the way it's kind of tiered. Yeah. And what I didn't know was in Seattle, like you think the sun goes down, like, like in Los Angeles, like the sun goes mm -hmm. down and if it's in your eyes, it goes down to some point, yeah. right? Maybe like seven or eight o'clock. Yeah. It is yep. nine o'clock yep. and the sun is staring me in the yeah. face. And yep. I'm like, Oh my God, that's why we got these seats so cheap is yeah. the sun at nine o'clock at night yep. is still staring you in the face. It's because of the position of the earth. Um, it's, and yeah, because it's so far north near the North pole. Right. That the same thing happened to me when I went to an Everett Aqua Sox game in June, you know, like right in the middle of the summer, I was getting to be like the longest, you know, like, Oh my gosh, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> yeah. It, it's fascinating. Uh, uh, Angela, have you ever been to Seattle? I have. Yeah. I, I saw, um, I went to it was it was still Safeco Field at the time. Oh, it was in two thousand, gosh, two thousand fourteen, maybe two thousand fifteen. But yeah, I, uh, it was the um, Seattle Mariners and um, 
and I don't even remember who they played, uh, but it was um, uh, I got to see uh, Felix right. Hernandez pitch, and he pitched. Oh, to right Gem on! That yeah, That's right, the King's Court. And he pitched to Gem that night. So yeah, it's a beautiful park. One of my one of uh, one of my favorite parks I visited. We we had seats in the upper deck, but it was right behind home plate. So that's awesome. And Kevin's changing to a Seattle I Pilots hat. It was, uh, last year was the celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Seattle Pilots, which was there for one year. And this is the hat they give away the day I went. It was one of those awesome. back to clock days. So I like this is one of my favorite major league hats. Just such a simple thing, but it's really cool looking like a Pirates hat. Alaska Airlines did a good job of sponsoring this one. Yeah, and that, that was just a one-year team in 69, yeah. and then they went to? Oh, I know where. Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Don't try to trick me there. That's right. So uh, uh, another uh, great segment. Thank you, guys. So now we're going to move on to baseball uh, card pack wars. As always, we get all of our cards from Hall of Fame baseball cards in Arcadia, California, uh, hofbc.com. And uh, let's look at the pack war standings. Okay. Kevin, pulling ahead, uh, but we are hot on your tail. Uh, the the percentages are, are not that far off. Uh, but yeah, Kevin pulling away with a, a good, actually I had the best week last week, but, but still, uh, uh, at three and one, uh, but yeah, so let's, let's get to it. Here are the baseball card pack wars rules. We're going to open our packs. A relic card knocks out one player of choice. An autograph card knocks out two players. The high number card, uh, wins in round one and two. First and second round where you get one point for a win. The third round is the wild card round. Two points for that win, and we all drink collectively when we get a Brewers card. So, uh, Kevin, uh, yeah. you are in first place, so why don't you start it out? All right. Let me start with a pack of Big League Baseball. Big League Baseball 2020. All right. So let me – yeah, let me reconfigure that. There you go. Yeah, no worries. Let me just get this bad boy up, and we'll see what yeah, we got here. Yeah, let's get some Brewers. All right. Always. All right. We got – Michael, don't call me Chris Chavez Tatanka. That's for the wrestling fans out there. <laughs> uh, one of my favorites. Yeah, let me make sure here. National League doubles leaders. Unfortunately, there's no Brewers there. Wow. I was hoping Yelly be in there, but he's not in there. Let's see. We got Luis Arias. I can't roll my R's, so don't expect me to do that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We got Ronald Acuna Jr. Andrew McCutcheon. Uh, insert here, this is Defensive Wizard DJ LeMayhew. Uh, the orange card is Joey Gallo. There. Uh, Big League's best, we got 2019 American League one scored leaders. Uh, Corey Seager, two Dodgers in a row here. Corey Seager and David Price. There you go. David Price is the Dodger I like because he was very – Helpful to minor league players this year. There you go. Come here. Cheers to that guy for that, for what he did there. All right, Angela, you're up. All right. All right, so we're going to start things off with uh, Charlie Blackman. Uh, AL ERA leaders. So we got Garrett Cole, Verlander, and Charlie Morton. Dustin May, rookie. Griffin Canning. We got uh, Juan Soto. Uh, flipping out insert Vlad Jr. Got an orange parallel of Mike Miner. Mike Yastrzemski. Uh, Luis Castillo. And we have 2019 National League slugging percentage leaders. We got oh, Rendon. Cody Bellinger and get your beers ready. Yeah. Really. There you go. Nice. So Chad M actually brings up a very interesting question, which I wanted yeah. to address. Um, will there be oh. a pack war champion uh, crowned? Uh, I uh, wanted to propose that um, there is a 2020 champion and we start over in January. Uh, so we can have a whole season. Uh, so sure. we can, can actually do that. I think that I think that would be a lot of fun. Sounds good to me. Uh, let's do this. Let me. Uh, sounds good to me. I'm in the lead. You know. 
<laughs> might sound so, good to Angela. Might sound good to Angela because he's pretty far back too. You know. Yeah. Start over. Yeah. Angela's gonna have some September call ups or what? A, a November call ups. So yeah. We, so we can December. Uh, all right, so uh, innings pitch leaders, uh, we have uh, Verlander, uh, Shane Bieber, and Garrett Cole. Uh, Chris Bryant. Uh, Austin Meadows. Nick Senzel. Uh, this is walks leaders. Uh, Alex yeah. Bregman, uh, Mike Trout, and Carlos Santana. Oh, so American League. Well, yeah, come over. Uh, Max <laughs> Kepler, this is the flipping out, a uh, little kind of interesting card. Mm -hmm. That's your answer. The orange parallel is the Ronald Acuna Jr. Shane Bieber. Uh, cool Wit Merrifield. <laughs> and the innings pitch leaders uh, is uh, Strasburg, uh, DeGrom, and Aaron Nola. Oh, rats. All right. So, Kevin, your high card. Oh, I mean, this. I, I'm guessing this. Good luck beating this one. 2 4 2. Yeah, right. 2 4 2. Come on. Someone, beat, someone better beat that. All right, Good. so yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I, oh five, five. I can't tell. Is that five? Is that two five five or two three five? Uh oh. Two five. five. Okay. Ooh, two five here. five. Two five five. All right. All right. Can you beat that? Oh, okay. I can with a two sixty two. Jeez, oh, awesome. we didn't do wow. We didn't do, do that well this week, but hey, we'll take it. Okay, and, we'll and this was a 263, so like I had two of them. Oh, look at you. Actually, that's so weird. I, I have two of this like same card, like the innings pitch leaders. Oh, yeah, the AL and the and 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 Yep. Okay, so uh, uh pro debut. Yes, yep. sir. All right. I'm the box. Where's my box? Uh, Bubble Puck says, uh, winner takes it all. Yes, ABBA and <laughs> Cowboy Jen. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not sure. I, uh, oh, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> back when the champion wins a date with me. So, uh, I know, I know that, uh, I will say that Jack is a very, very good date. Uh, he treats you right. <laughs> well, there you go. Maybe at the end of the day, let's just hate the ghost of Jack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I don't, uh, you, you may want to pull up the, um, Oh yeah. The Brewers. Yes, I will. Yeah. So uh, Alex Kirloff from the, uh, uh, Pensacola blue Wahoos. Sorry. I always try to have that ready for you. And I, I failed today. I Nassim Nunez. Uh, that is from the, uh, GCL Marlins, uh, the Buffalo Bisons, uh, Nate Pearson. I'm actually going to put this one aside because I don't know what it is. Uh -oh. uh, Jared Kellenick. Uh, that you is know? the uh, Arkansas Travelers. Okay. The uh, Down East Wood Ducks, Sam what? Huff. The what? The Down East? Wood Down Ducks. East Wood Ducks. I never heard of that team. That I, right? I, I haven't either. What is this team? Is that, that's not like an independent team. I, I think it might be Rangers. He seems to be from the Rangers. I down never... east. Down east. Who knew? Uh, the Hudson Valley Renegades. Because there's any that renegades are in the Hudson Valley, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and the Indianapolis Indians. Uh, this is uh, Cabrian Hayes. All right. So one of our uh, friends who uh, is not – I don't think he's on here uh, – um, uh, Mark Viquez, he actually went to the Indians uh, team shop uh, in one of his videos. Oh, right on. And oh, no. an autograph. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. This is an we're autograph done. of Spencer Howard. It is uh, 78 out of 85. It is wow. for the Reading Fighting Phils. Nice. Oh, wow. So there you That's go. So I, I don't think, uh, have we had an autograph out of this one? Out of this no, site, yeah. No. Nope. So, Angelo, we're done. <laughs> Future we considerations. Done. So, there you go. 
I, I guess I, I'll so put my Mike's, pack Mike, that Mike's I two for two now. Next two for two. All right. All right. Well, what, yeah, I can put that pack away. Our stipulation? <laughs> All right, Mike, what's the stipulation? The stipulation is oh, I, oh, um, I had a good, I had a good one because uh, we we went did we go American League National League on anything? We've done, yeah, we've done that before. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if uh, anybody ha let's see if anybody has any suggestions for stipulations in the in the while well, I'm thinking in the chat. Uh, while I Let's see. Let's go. Oh, interesting. Okay, so let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go. National League. So okay. that 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 will that will at least will, uh, I'll, it'll be competitive. The most National League players. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Iron Mike Mondragon with the KO. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Right, my packs. So we're gonna get in the baseballism bag, and I have a uh, Bowman Chrome 2019 Ooh. with All five right. cards only. Yep, five cards. Oh yeah. boy, that. Why? Uh, Come on, what if you get an autograph? You can kill us again, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So first card is Jordan Yamamoto. So one. All right. <laughs> Tim Tebow. Oh, wow. that's so awesome. That's Tim fantastic. Tebow, yeah. Good job. Chrome. That's two. On a Chrome. On a, there you go. Uh, Austin Riley. So three. Three. Woo! Wow. All right. Coming in hot. Jacob DeGrom. Oh, my that's God. Four. <laughs> you should have said NL East. You would have won this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, my only American League card. Oh, no. Is a Connor Plinkington autograph. Oh my god! Oh You've my gotta god. be kidding me! Gosh! <laughs> Hold your shot. Is wow. there a word for that? Is that a, is that, that's a, a two walk offs right there? Yeah, that's a that's a four zero sweep. Jerk off. Bust bust out the brooms. <laughs> <laughs> wow! That's a first. There's that's a, that's a beer that's baseball blog fun. first, right? That is. That is. Wow. wow. Connor Plinkington and Spencer Howard. So there you go. Well, if you haven't heard of them now, you uh, that before you've heard of them now. That's right. They got they got Mike that that sweep. Like my God, I'm gonna get my beer now. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Well, we have more time for trivia now. <laughs> You're the shortest show we ever did. <laughs> yeah, that was that wow. was wild. Wow, I've never you're, seen anything, anything like that. Wrong, Angelo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. I'm a brag. All right. Yeah, no, yeah. We know, we know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, Cowboy you Jack says, I, with, "You don't get me upset with you, that Cowboy Jack, because you just took away his drinks because he drinks after every card." That's true. You that's true. Drink, yeah, yeah. I. I uh, yeah, that was wild. That was wild. Yeah. I don't even know what to think about that. I, I oh, feel bad, but I yet I feel good. That was uh, wild don't feel bad. Stuff. I wouldn't feel bad at all. <laughs> wild stuff there. Oh, Mr. Soup. Uh, from the uh, dot. Actually, Mr. Soup is a part of the HOFBC crew, and oh, right. uh, he's on the Dodger film, so he's on the softball. Cool. So thank you Thanks for joining us. Wish we could have better card wars for you. But actually, that's an exciting card wars. Two autographs in three rounds. Very good. He, and and uh, he says, I drink no matter what. Best chess in the West. Me yes. too. Me too. Yeah. All right. So let's do some baseball trivia uh, okay. before we get out of here. So we're going to um, we're gonna switch it up a little bit. I've been doing who is this. But you're going to guess who this is. But uh, we're going to do some uh, uh, a little bit harder uh, questioning here. So... And you're you're welcome to uh, you're welcome to in the chat to you know chime in and tell me who you think this is. The degree of difficulty is very severe here. Uh oh. Who is the only player in the expansion era to pitch 50, 50 innings and hit fifteen home runs in the same season? 
We we need we need some dramatic music here. I have no idea. Because <laughs> mm. <laughs> expansion here, am I? This is a very good guess. It, yeah, <laughs> and I I don't believe Pedro was a pitcher. How do you know? <laughs> That's true. He could have picked somewhere else. <laughs> you did not the season. You did not see staff the major league of all those players. Did, That's right? very true. That's very true. There was some, yeah, they had to, for the interest of time, they did, probably didn't show his pitching. He probably could have pitched some, like some, you know, some really bad innings early in the season. You know what I mean? That's very true. That's very true. God. This is expansion era. So is that after 61? Is that what's considered the expansion era? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I want to verify. 61. Well, yeah, the Mets, that yeah, would be a part of the it. Angels. The Mets even started after 61. All right. 50 innings. Oh, my God. And it's obviously a top 1,000 player. <laughs> is it Because this is from your top 1,000 book, right? It is not. It is actually oh, from an LA Times article oh, that actually article. had a really cool. We used it in the Beer Baseball blogcast. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, the, I, the, the, the Hoppy Hour. No, and uh, like yeah, these are the most. Difficult question. I just thought this was one exclusive clue for that. So my yeah. bad. Okay. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a top 1,000 player. Okay. Right. Oh, my gosh. Good luck getting Avey on this one because I don't know it, you know. <laughs> okay. A any guess, uh, Angelo? Obviously before DH. It's got to be somebody in the 60s. I think it has to be. If that helps. Yeah, I don't – I don't even have a. It started in seventy three or seventy four, and I don't know. If any, I don't know any pitcher who hit that well, but. So you guys did exactly what I did. I totally a hundred percent overthought this. Really? So Bubble Pug. Oh my! Chad God. M. Oh and my! Arian God. Tobias. Yep. There you go. I, I totally overthought this. It threw me off so bad. And I was, oh I was, my so, God. yeah, yeah. I, I was like, and then, so I went through and looked at his stats and his, um, you know, his pitching stats and his batting stats. And, uh, the discussion now is, is Otani, um, a bust or an average player at this point? I think it's so too early to tell. I think so too. It is pretty early out. I think so too. Um, I think this, I mean, obviously in the pandemic, I mean, he didn't get a, much of a chance to play either. So that kind of skews it. Um, I yeah, still, I, I, I definitely think it's still too early to tell because the pandemic shortened season, you know, his, you know, the unfortunate season, you know, you know, the, the season prior. I mean, so you really only have his rookie season, which has been uninterrupted, which was pretty darn good. So, you know, um, I definitely think it's too early to tell. Yeah. I think yeah. so too. All Angels podcast, you know, it says exactly yeah. what I, he took the yeah. words right out of my mouth yeah. and he's, yeah. he's coming in as an unhealthy player. Yeah. Yeah. And when we were talking about Dontrell Willis, uh, you know, like you see how like these, uh, these injuries, uh, either equal, a very short career or somehow they get around them and, and, and he, they have a, a extraordinary career. It's somewhere else, you know, he could play outfield or, you know, that's why I, I, you know, I, I, I was going to ask all angels podcast. I mean, do they switch him to a strictly batter, a uh, strict, strict, like put him in right field, you know, or, you know, but what, what an outfield pitcher. that would be, by the yeah. way, they don't need to though. I mean, they, no, they, they have a DH once, they, like uh, this. They should. Once his contract is up, they can have I think, DH. I think the play. Yeah. I think the play is to teach him how to play first base. Oh, that's that's interesting call. That way, that way, you just make Pujols a full time DH. Well, I mm. mean, this is it. Pujols has one year left. He's probably yeah. going to be done after this year, pretty much. Unless, unless they make him a full time DH, he could have a couple yeah. more years as a full time DH. You think they're going to resign him? Because how much is that going to cost them? You know, I don't think it, I don't think it would cost much if he resigns a short term deal. I think his preference would his preference would be to stay there or or or, 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 or sign a one year deal with St. Louis. Yeah. Oh boy. 
Oh, but, but he was, yeah, but it, <laughs> you just it, extended it, this it, conversation by half hour. If they if they exp- extend the universal DH beyond the season. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, I never thought right. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, a lot of variables. A lot of variables. Wild card there if they if they don't. But. All right. So let's go to question number two. Name the only father-son duo to play together in a major league game in this century. I feel like there's a, a, too obvious of an answer that's not the right answer. If if we're like, because there's one that I can think of right away, but like that's kind of almost too obvious. But. I mean, Griffey Senior, Griffey Junior, is my thought. Yeah, that was that was that was my that was my first guess. Uh, the first think, thing that came to my mind. That's what I was thinking too. But I don't think Griffey Senior played by two thousand because that guy was playing in like the seventies. You know, so that's while, while you guys are thinking, uh, there, there <laughs> this is very uh, there is very interesting. Uh, not 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 the bonds part, but um, uh. It switched on me. Uh, uh, trade Trout and put put Otani in center. Put <laughs> <laughs> uh, my true angel stand right there, you know. <laughs> hey, shout out shout out to Caitlin watching though. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's uh that's Mark's uh, Mark's wife. Mark was on. Oh, the, uh, gotcha. Hoppy oh okay, right oh, on. Yeah. All the yeah, way so in, uh, I, all the way in North Richland Hills, Texas. Yeah, everybody's yeah. going. Everybody's going for the Griffies now. You have, yeah, you have, it, look it, at the it, question. It, look at the question. Yeah, this century played together in a major league game. Yeah, in, in this I'm century. Saying. Oh, in this century! Oh my gosh, yeah. you guys that's did. Yeah, did he... You could say this millennium if you wanted to. Come yeah, on, right. true. that's true. That's why I, like, I knew when the Griffies because the Griffies played together, but it was in the nineties. Because I was like, "There's no way Griffey played till two thousand. Right. That's a good call. That's a good call. Yeah, um, that's, no. that's why I'm oh like, my gosh." Perplexed because I'm like I have no clue from here, so that's why I'm like, who had a kid? Who has a kid in here? <laughs> right, right. So that I mean, it kind of like it kind of blew my mind because I'm like I, I have to read the question. And it's like you know, because I'm trying to think of one of those guys who's old enough, who was young enough to start in baseball, but then be old enough to have a kid come up. Because I'm like, it wouldn't be like a Donald Shields. It wouldn't be Fernando Tatis. You know, I'm, just, you know, I'm like, right, man. right. Oh gosh! So so as oh, I saw that this, this actually happened in an October game. Oh uh, yeah, and it wow. was. Uh, I will say that it was uh, two thousand and one. Oh wow! So it was a one. Okay. No, it wouldn't be that. <laughs> did you did did you guys play? Did Taro and Mr. <laughs> Excitement play in the same? <laughs> In the Who's same Taro? game, talking about? Who's Taro? so funny. Bubble Pug with a very uh, oh, very good guess. The fielders, uh, that is not right, but a very a good guess. Very yeah. good. Chad M with a guess of Felipe oh, and Luis that's, that's also guess. a great guess, and not did it. The, not it. Did, did the uh, the Alomars play? No, that was too far apart. No, yeah, that's too far apart, no, right? Too far apart. Because you have the whole Lou family, and then I, I was almost thinking the Boons. I'm like, no, that's too far apart. Yeah, so that's that's a good uh, guess too. God, I'm like, you guys, you guys are hovering around it. And it's, and I know it's not, I am. It's okay. not one that's obvious because the reason is because the son um, did not play very long in the majors. Mm. Yeah, but I will give you a hint that the the father is a Hall of Famer. Oh wow, very good. Which may not make <laughs> clear up the. Uh, I was almost uh, thinking Tony Gwynn, but I don't think his son. No, they didn't play on the same era in the, yeah. in the same game. Okay, he was I'm already out of baseball by then. No, I don't know if Tony Gwynn Jr. played and shoot. Wow, my yeah. God! And see, you threw it off by saying in October 2001 because that could have been a regular season game because it was it was a regular season game. See? Yeah, see, there's the other caveat there. God. Wow, <laughs> I love it. You know, we're you know at least we're yeah, there. You go, the Menendez brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, they only go to Knicks games. <laughs> oh, God. 
By the way, I ha- I have that card with the Menendez brothers, uh, the uh, basketball card. Did you do you guys ever hear about that? No, I didn't. <laughs> there was a, there was a basketball card, and uh, oh, God, I God, I forget. It's one. I, it's like is it Clyde Drexler? Uh, someone in the comments, please. I think Chad. Uh, do you know who it is? Um, but uh, the Menendez brothers, they yeah. actually right before they were caught, uh, yeah. they actually went to a Knicks game. And uh, they got on a on a card on a basketball yeah. card, and I I have that card. <laughs> I do remember hearing about that card. I don't know who it was on it, but I definitely remember that. Oh card. god, it's like oh god, I think it's a Portland Trailblazer. I, I uh, but I I have it. Yeah, this is a tough one. It's, it's not Tony. Yeah, Gwynn. I Tony Gwynn too. That's the only, I was like that was my closest guess, but I remember Tony Gwynn Jr. making to the majors. Yeah. So this, this is very oh, hard. Well, we're, um, we're sniffing right around it. But I'm like, yeah. And, and, and to be fair, uh, I did not get this one either. And I didn't even know that they played uh, together and it is Tim Raines oh, junior oh, wow. and senior. I didn't know. I was like thinking like, did rock Reigns have a kid, but I just totally shuffled it out. Cause I had no idea this kid played. Wow. Wow, but look at that. Oh my gosh. I know. And, and, and like, up and senior. Yeah. Dude, he doesn't even look that and, old there. And look yeah. at that. Where, where did uh, where did Tim Rain Senior go to end his career? They they all it all ends all up in did, Baltimore, yeah, right? They all do. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, it was like a favor, I think. It, it and uh, I should put this in the beer baseball uh, broadcast playlist. Uh, there's actually footage of of uh, them playing in the same outfield together. No, so uh, Tim Raines, a senior playing in left, uh, Tim Raines, a uh, junior playing in center. So oh, very great. cool. Tim would have debuted in like 78 ish. I want to say is when he would have came up, I think with the yeah. expo. So yeah. he probably had Mr. If I junior pretty young and, and junior came up to the major leagues young. Cause that's only, you know, yeah. 21 years or so later, bam. That's what's so cool about they, these players. Like, you know, like everybody that we were talking about, like uh, uh, Prince Fielder, yeah. um, you know, and, and they all got like that major league baseball experience from just being around the game and being, yeah. you know, in the dugout and being in the clubhouse and stuff like that. So super cool. So that is the show we had for you today. I wanted to give a, uh, uh, a rest in peace yes. to the great oh, yeah. Alex Trebek, uh, 1940 to 2020. Uh, a huge baseball fan. I remember going to Dodger games and seeing him there on the big screen. That's why I, I put this one in there. So salute Alex Trebek. Uh, you, uh, you know, Jeopardy is uh, one of my favorite shows, obviously, cause I love trivia and I love uh, the reverse trivia of asking, you know, on, giving the answer and then you have to do the question. Classic on chase has not gotten its due this week. You know, I used to be watching now on like channel four during the daytime. No, that that should have been the format of this week's trivia. I, you know, I, I'm picking yeah. myself now thinking about it, but um, yeah, this is this has been a weird week for me. So I'm just like, I'm lucky to have done what I did, uh, but I definitely should have uh, reversed it around. Uh, but I'm not sure if anybody would have got that <laughs> if we would have done the Otani question and, and oh, God. Uh, Tim Rains yeah. Jr. So you would have yeah. to guess the question. It wouldn't. I mean, that was like a Jeopardy clue. And these guys are like, who is Al? Who is, you know, Tim Raines Jr. and Sr.? Yeah. Oh, uh, Chad M. Yes. Mark Jackson. Oh, Nick. there you go. Ni- 1990. So that is exactly it. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I, I appreciate Yeah. Um, Bubble Pug says, yeah, it, was, it was definitely, definitely one of the. Hey, what, uh, Kevin, what was the thing that you, you uh, talked about? There was another game show that he was a part of. There was something called Pitfall that aired. I saw it in like syndication. It was just, it's a really weird show where you answer some questions and then you literally have to cross this bridge of eight doors. And every time you answer a question, you go to the next door and you have like a hundred seconds. But then every door, there's like three doors that are a trap. Oh, wow. It's a pitfall. That's why it's called Pitfall. And before it starts, they blink all the doors uh, and you have to pick. There's three doors that light up twice, and you got to figure out which ones light up twice, and then that's the pitfalls. And you get to pick two numbers, so you have these cards where you're safe from crossing the bridge. Wow. It's really weird. Like I said, it's weird. Wow. There's a clip, there's a clip I, I was watching, and it's funny because at the end, Trebek said he got like gift. He got like the one that he got screwed over on a payday was from being on Pitfall. Oh, is so that right? He talks about it at the end. It was a Canadian game show. 
But he got all kinds of issues of like the unions and the and the studio. It's kind of funny here and tell the story. Wow. And it's, it's like, like, for instance, if you were to meet Alex Trebek, I mean, this is something that we would talk about is um, you like everybody would want to talk about Jeopardy, right? If, if you met Alex Trebek, oh, like, I, in yeah. fact, um, I wanted to make this mention in 1986. Uh, I went to high school at Shadow Mountain High School in uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Our librarian was actually on Jeopardy. Wow. Oh, wow. So, and she came in second place. So, uh, the, uh, actually, I should put that in the Bear Baseball block as it, yeah, it was a that, Shadow that Mountain teacher. Yeah. That actually and, and, would have been around the time he started on Jeopardy. Because Jeopardy was originally a show, I don't know, I think in the 60s or 70s with Art, Link, Art Linkletter, I think is his name. Was right, right, right. You know, but then yeah. Trebek came around, I want to say mid eighties at the latest 87, something like that. So that's what I'm saying. You said, wow, it's right on the same. Yeah. Time. So I, I didn't even realize that you're right. And, and what the cool thing it was that in one, one of the question was, uh, or I'm sorry, one of the answers. And yes. then she had to end was uh shoeless Joe Jackson. So she actually, you know, was, who was a part oh. of the, the 1919 baseball scandal. Yeah. Yeah. Shoeless Joe Jackson. And, so uh, I always remember that, and that was that was our librarian. So like that's my little connection to. Uh, but 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 we would everybody would want to talk about Jeopardy. <laughs> you would bring up probably the worst part of his life, I uh, professional I no life. Idea. It was just like it was just the like I said. I was trying to describe it to you. It's a really weird show, but it was on like Channel Nine in the middle of the day. So I'd be sick from school, and like if for some whatever reason on Channel Nine they showed like the most random game shows. Yeah, it's like a syndication, but that's how. You know, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune was. It was almost kind of like syndicated out, you know. Yeah. And there was a really great game on Atari 2600 called Pitfall, which I used to love. Yes. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> great game. Great so that's that's what I, I think of when I when I think about that. Um so yeah, so the, I mean please thank you. Please like and subscribe. We are almost to 300 followers. Uh, I would love to get the th uh, to 300. It's a milestone. It's it's you know, we don't do it for the followers per se, but it's, it's very good in our world to, you know, to get, we're trying to get to a thousand. Um, and, uh, if you like the show, please, uh, like, and subscribe, uh, follow all of our social media. Uh, we're going to do a kind of a push, uh, later, like, uh, like I said, do, doing the plugs, I'm going to do a call to action maybe next week. Uh, like, Hey, everybody follow our Twitter, uh, uh, next week, maybe follow our, our Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. We have some big stuff coming uh, that you can help us support uh, this channel and uh, we can actually kind of do some uh, extra fun stuff and get you guys involved. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we have no plugs because we did them at the beginning. Uh, Angelo, uh, do you want to say anything to our uh, loyal fans? I'll, I'll say. No, thank you guys for uh, tuning in each and every week. 28 episodes strong, 29 if you include our pilot episode. So, uh, we're going to keep going, so hope you keep following. Thank you. Kevin? Gosh, well, I was going to add to that, but thank you for joining us. Hey, we're 5% of the way to 500, Angelo, since you talked about Champs Wrestling from Hollywood. Come on. Yes, let's yeah. go. We're yeah. to go. Four to go. Or so. <laughs> we can catch them. They only do it once, once a week, right? Or Yeah, yeah exactly. They... Once a week, yep, exactly. Right. We'll, get, we'll, get, we'll catch them. We'll catch them. We'll ca uh, we may not catch them. <laughs> But, you know, we'll try to stay on their level. We're, yes, we're, exa we're exactly. hundred percent. So uh, we will not see you at the brewery. We'll not see you at the baseball stadium, hopefully soon, foreshadowing. Uh, but we'll see you here next week, next Tuesday. Check us out. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Good night.